Well, folks, we have a great guest with us. J.J. Heller is a great artist, and you've heard me talk about her several times. In fact, she was. Uh, we'll, we'll share with her our story of uh, sign language uh, performing sign for one of her songs, which is an interesting educational experience for me. And you guys remember me talking about that. So, without ado, she has a new CD. She has a book. All sorts of great news. J.J. Heller, how are you doing? I am doing very well, thank you. Well, I tell you, you uh, you mean a lot to our family and our lives because uh, what love really means was a song that our uh, teen group at our church performed at Valentine's Day. They did a Valentine's Day service and they performed what love really means in sign language, which is all beautiful and lovely, except that they needed someone to play the Jesus part at the end, and I guess I got chosen, and I don't know how to find <laughs> J.J. Heller, and um, thank you <laughs> for beautiful lyrics, but uh, it was a crash course um, for me. I don't know if it's because I had at least some facial hair that made me Jesus. I, I didn't have the beard <laughs> then, but yes, I learned very quickly on I know you've murdered, I know you've lied. I, I, know, that, I know that verse pretty well, but uh, wow. you know, just a beautiful song. Thank you. So now you know how to sign the word murder and lie. That's great. That was, that was <laughs> the easy part, to be perfectly honest. It's all the other stuff that goes around that that was a little difficult for me. But if nothing else, I know oh, how to, yeah. I love you, which was obviously a really powerful part of that verse and uh, stanza was, you know, I love you. And I keep saying that over yeah. and over again. So, yes, it was a very powerful song. It was a great uh, message that's touched a lot of lives. Our teen girls are the ones that came up with this. And is that, I mean, I, I mean, I, it's kind of a rhetorical question to say, is that rewarding? But when you put something together like this and you hear this kind of testimony, because obviously these girls are not the only ones, I mean, how do you, what do you do to process that? Well, it's, it's funny because that song specifically is the song that took the least amount of time to write than any song I've ever written. And it's also the song that we've heard probably the most stories about um, how God has used it in people's lives, and and I love that he did it that way because he just wanted me to know for sure that it's his song and not mine, and so in that sense, I just have the blessing to hear story after story of how God is working in people's lives, and, um, and to know that I played a little part in that is really, really special, but at the same time, I, um, I can I can rejoice in it and also not really take very much credit <laughs> at all, um, but it just, it puts me in a really unique um, position to hear all of these stories and to hear how God is working so personally in people's lives, so it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Well, speaking of amazing, you are continuing to amaze. We have a new book, The Golden Feather, and a CD, and catch everybody a little bit on the story and how these sort of projects are working in your life. Sure. Well, so over the years, we've heard um, from our listeners, um, and I say we, I'm talking about my husband, Dave, and I, um, because he's um, a huge part of what we do. He plays guitar when we play our music live and he is my co-writer and so all of this music comes from the both of us and so over the years our listeners have told us so many times that they play our music as they're falling asleep or as their kids are falling asleep and it's just been really soothing for them and so they've been asking for a complete lullaby album and um, and we didn't have enough lullabies and love songs to do that, and so we spent last summer writing more. And and so we went into the studio and we re-recorded a bunch of our love love songs and lullabies that, that have already been recorded on previous projects. And then we also added a bunch of new songs. And and so as we were in the songwriting process for this record. Dave and I were on a, a flight. I don't even remember where we were flying, but he just, he turned to me and he said, hey, if we're writing songs for bedtime, wouldn't it be cool if we wrote a bedtime story to go with it? And I had never even considered it before, but as soon as he said it, I thought, man, that sounds like so much fun. And And the cool thing is we're independent artists, and so we don't have a record label who we have to clear all these decisions with. And 
So if we decide to do something, we can do it. Uh, it just means that we have to pay for it <laughs> ourselves. Um, so we, we shoulder all the risk, but then we reap all the reward as well. And so we started to write this story called The Golden Feather, and we wanted to incorporate some of our daughter's favorite things. Our our daughters are five and two, and so they're really into dreams and feathers and unicorns and mommy, and so those are all elements in in this story. And um, and so the little girl is narrating, and she's telling her mom about what she's going to dream about that night, and she goes on this big adventure. And then uh, and I love the end. The the end of the book is my favorite um, because it says. The little girl is talking, and she says, My mommy listens closely, like mommies always do. Wow. She says, When I'm asleep tonight, my love, I'll dream of you. Wow. And, uh, and so we used that uh, and then wrote, wrote a song called I Dream of You, and that eventually became the title track of our new album. That's fantastic. And your daughters, of course, are not only the test audience for this, but obviously just inspiring you. Right. I mean, I, oh, I, work, I yeah. I'm, I'm working on writing something myself and it's my my daughter and my son that are so integral in the character development and the story and whatever. So so is it the two year old or the five year old that you're you know, you've got rolling around in your head and your heart as you're putting all this together? Uh, kind of a mix of both. Um, it, even down to the drawing of her is kind of a hybrid of, of Lucy and Nora. But it's funny if you look at the illustrations, the mom in the book looks very much like me. <laughs> and so, well, so we, pre- we, 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 we prefer that, no offense to Dave, but we thought if it <laughs> yeah. weren't the other way, the book might not quite sell as well. So sorry, Dave, um, we're going to have to stick with JJ as being the model <laughs> here. So Yeah, fair enough. Um, so how much has being a mom in two and five, it's not been that long. How much has that changed you as far as your approach to writing, as far as your inspirational things and how God kind of, God changes as we change. So how does he, how does he change that uh, relationship with you and, and, and this incredible talent that you have? Well, it's been pretty significant, I'd say, because before I had kids, I really struggled with writing any song that was uh, joyful or, um, I don't, uh, just happy sounding. And I was always writing songs about struggle and pain and, um, which, you know, I, I still feel like is a big part of my ministry, just exploring those different topics and, and where God is in the midst of that. But yeah, I couldn't for the life of me write anything positive <laughs> Uh, and so I was so surprised when I had Lucy and my first baby completely changed the way that I wrote songs. And, and all of a sudden, all of these happy little love songs started to pour out. And, and I think that it was just the Lord kind of unlocking a, a new place in my heart. And all of a sudden, I, I could just express these feelings and emotions through song and so it's been really fun to watch that process well i know our our listening audience can attest to this i say this many times is you know our life would be a whole lot less stressful if we would just pause and look at our children even whenever it's our teenagers Mm -hmm. just pause and look at them and you'll see god's mercy and grace and love in a different way and that's what you're talking about And, and lucy and nora have brought that to you're in Dave's lives, and it's transformed your ministry incredibly. That's, that's just, just just an incredible story that so much has happened so quickly. Yeah, and in fact, this year, I feel especially what you were saying about pausing is definitely what God has put on my heart as kind of a, a focus for me in this season um, to slow down, because I just tend to always rush through things and have this feeling of urgency, even when it's not really urgent. I'm just rushing through. And so the Lord has really um, put it on my heart to to slow down and to be present in each moment and accept each moment as a gift rather than trying to get through it so I can get to the next thing. And 
and I think it's so easy when my kids are so small <laughs> to um, just, you know, try to push through it and forget to enjoy the joy of of each moment, whether it's just watching them struggle to put on their shoes or, you know, getting their lunch all over their face. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look at it through new eyes rather than, oh, this is such an inconvenience. Um, but to say it's, you know, it's so much fun to watch them learn how to do this and develop skills that they can use for life and, and show them patience and grace as they do it. Well, and it couldn't be more true. I we just went through graduation with my son, and I guarantee we you know we watched two different slideshows. Our church had two different graduates, and there is always a photo of a child with food smeared all over their face when they were mm-hmm. a child. Now there are, there are cute pictures too, but those are the moments, right? You savor those moments. Yeah. And uh, JJ, how much has um, God changed your? Um, approach not not really just about songwriting and recording but just your approach to every aspect of your life because of the kids i definitely have noticed that i am a lot less self focused i think having children forces a person to be less selfish in a lot of ways and um before i had lucy my oldest I was really, really struggling with anxiety and panic attacks, and I was even um, kind of a hypochondriac. I was, I was always sure that I had some sort of cancer or was having a heart attack, or you know, I was just really focused on myself and how I was feeling and afraid, and and then pretty much as soon as uh, as Lucy entered the world. I just didn't struggle with that anymore. It was amazing how um, all of a sudden my attention was on her. And uh, But it also opens the door to another struggle, which is, you know, worrying about my kids. And um, I remember especially early on when they're, when they're infants, they're just so vulnerable and fragile and, so I would worry about them so much, and um, and the Lord really comforted me with the thought that that He loves my children even more than I do, and so to just release them to Him and trust that He's going to take care of them uh, even better than I can. And so being a mom has definitely challenged me to let go of control in a way that uh, I've never been challenged before. So that's that's definitely what he's been working on in my life. Now, I know you mentioned that, you know, you're not attached to a label and you have sort of the the freedom and the burden of that. And I I wanted you to touch on that, elaborate a little bit more, because you mentioned that too, that there's there's the the freedom of that to, to to venture into you know styles of music, different songs, whatever, without having the label, without having them pressing you and listen. No, no, this is not what we want to do, or this is what. But you can kind of have that free reign. But at the same time, you have to carry all of the burden of you know writing those checks and making sure all of this sort of kind of keeps the wheels turning, right? Right. And the Lord is so good and so wise and. I'm amazed how he brought my husband Dave and I together because Dave is one of the wisest and shrewdest (laughs) businessmen I know. I mean, he's so self-motivated and organized. And I mean, because we're basically small business owners, um, being independent artists. And so he he's just really good at it. And I think that's why so many artists, are not independent because it takes so much business savvy to to do it on your own. And I know that I couldn't do it uh, if I didn't have Dave. I would definitely need a label, but he um, he's just a great decision maker. And and I think for us, um, it's been really wonderful to be able to make all those big decisions for ourselves. And um, and I think that we travel and perform a lot less than most of our friends 
who are um, musicians and artists um, because, like, you know, we can make that decision. And for, for artists who are signed to a record label, they need to keep touring because the label has invested so much money into them and their career, and there are so many people's paychecks dependent on how much that artist is touring and working. And so there's just a lot of added pressure. And and for me, um, I'm always just praying about, you know, figuring out how much we need to be on the road and how much we need to be home with our kids. And uh, I don't think it would work for me <laughs> to be with a label and constantly having them saying, you need to be out on the road, you need to be out on the road. And then even for me to say, no, I want to be home, that would, that would, even the process of me saying no would be really draining for me um, because I'm such a, a people pleaser. <laughs> um, and so I think the Lord totally knew that. And it's been such a gift to be able to kind of make our own schedule and, and figure out what, what is the most healthy thing for our family and and I think the Lord has just really blessed us. My my prayer has always been that the Lord would make it really clear what what we're supposed to do and that we would just keep playing music for as long as there is a way to keep our family healthy. Um because right. I never want to sacrifice um the no. health of my family to, you know, promote my career. Even you know, even if it is labeled as ministry, I think my, my kids are my first ministry, and so I want to make sure that, that their needs are being met. Now, with that said, there are at least some serious strong rumors. I guess I kind of got a gray area from the organizer on this, but there's a good chance you'll be on tour with Hawk Nelson in Finding Favor? That is correct, yeah. Yeah, so it's coming together in October and November. I don't think we have a lot of the concrete dates that have been public yet, but uh, that is coming. You'll be able to get a chance to see J.J. Heller in your area, hopefully, folks. And um, J.J.'s in for – she's got all sorts of crazy things going on in her life, but I know we're running a little bit long, and I definitely want to – before I uh, we, we plug your website and all that, I want to get to one last question about my favorite of your videos. Now, if you don't know, folks, you can go to YouTube. You just type in J.J. Heller Music, J.J. Heller Music, J.J. Heller Music. All you got to do, you'll find her. The Boat Song. It is my favorite of the video. So who comes up with the choreography for something like this? Who puts this together? Because that is a fun video. Yeah, it is a fun video. And that's one of the joys of um, just being married to, to <laughs> somebody who I can collaborate with. Dave and I had so much fun brainstorming about that and we we brought in a friend to kind of help us brainstorm too and then to actually make it all happen we had our neighbors and friends come and help be the hands you know handing me the different items and uh and it's so funny because that's one of our most popular videos and we shot that in our dining room at our house and we borrowed lights and camera equipment and I think we spent $300 Three hundred dollars on the on the video, um, and it's. it's I think it's been our... close to two million views, by the way. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> it's some it's some so, extraordinary uh, number or whatever. But we will link to that video or you, you embed it if we're able to. And and this is a great video, folks. And if you're not familiar with the boat song, you have got to check this video out. It is fantastic and. Um, you can follow J, uh, JJ Heller at, at um, JJ Heller Music on Facebook. She's on Twitter at JJ Heller and YouTube JJ Heller Music um, on YouTube as well. Are you big in all the social media and all that kind of stuff? I try to be. Um, one of the things that I love to do is just be connected to our listeners and uh, just try to let people know that I'm a normal person, um, just like them. And so. It's been a really fun outlet. Uh, I post a lot of photos and, you know, say funny things that my kids have said throughout the course of the day. So, yeah, I try I try to be on social media as much as I can. 
I think that's the part that I enjoy the most. It really does help with the, you know, we, you know, it's got to be a little creepy from you guys because we can come up to you and start talking to you about your kids and stuff. You've never met us before face to face, but there is sort of a personal relationship that starts to build there, whether that's intentional or not, but you start to get more involved with, you know, an artist's real life, which is probably the hardest thing to juggle in the midst of a, a career like this and that kind of thing. And I think that's really kind of the coolest aspects of some of the social media. Yeah, it, yeah, and it um, it has been a lot of fun, and I think for me, it's just always trying to find the balance between um, you know, letting people know that I'm a, n- a normal person, but then also knowing when I need to protect my privacy and the privacy of our family, and, you know, it's always, it's kind of an interesting line to walk, and and everybody has a different line, too. I, um, Boy, that's I've, for sure. I've definitely, <laughs> yeah, I've definitely noticed that I... I share a lot more about myself and my family than a lot of my other musician friends. Um, but I also feel like it's kind of our part of our mission statement as artists is, is to just be approachable and to be real and um, not separate ourselves as being something, people who have it all together or rock stars or, you know, um, that we're just, people trying to love other people and follow Jesus and listen to his voice in our lives. And so our goal is to, even through our music especially, is to just help people see that they're not alone. Amen, sister. That's J.J. Heller, folks. And you can get a copy of the book, the CD, get more information about the tour, uh, jjheller.com. You can go there. Of course, we mentioned Facebook and YouTube, which is J.J. Heller Music. You can put those in there. And, of course, Twitter, at J.J. Heller. Uh, thank you again for fitting us into your schedule. I know you got a lot going on. You'll be out on tour at some point here soon. And uh, just lovely to get a chance to actually talk to you and get to know you a lot more. And uh, just, you know, your, 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 your music and your ministry has even touched our lives. So it was great to get a chance to talk to you about that as well. Well, thank you so much. All right. You take care. All right. You too.